July 9, 2016. The International Space Station live feed shows a bright object drifting toward Earth. Then, without warning, the stream cuts to blue. Not the first time. Not even the tenth. NASA blames routine signal loss. Yet every year, more incidents. Critics point to a pattern. The real mystery is not the objects. It is why every answer leaves us with more questions. So how does the International Space Station video really reach Earth? And what are we not being told? Every image from the International Space Station travels a path that stretches across thousands of miles and several layers of technology before it ever reaches a screen on Earth. The process starts with a set of cameras, sometimes commercial off-the-shelf models like Panasonic or Sony, mounted outside the station. These cameras feed their video signal into an onboard encoder, which compresses the footage into a digital stream. From there, the data enters the internal network on the ISS, bundled and formatted for transmission. But the ISS does not send this video straight to Houston. Instead, it relies on a complex relay chain. The signal travels from the station to a high-gain KU band antenna, a dish that must constantly reorient itself as the station orbits Earth at 17,500 miles per hour. The KU band link is chosen for its ability to carry high bandwidth video, essential for live high-definition feeds. Once the antenna locks onto the right relay, the video is beamed up to a Tracking and Data Relay Satellite, or TDRS. These satellites are not floating nearby. They are parked in geosynchronous orbit, about 22,000 miles above the equator. Each TDRS acts like a mirror, picking up the signal from the ISS and bouncing it down to Earth. The ground segment sits at White Sands, New Mexico. Here, massive dishes receive the downlinked signal decode it, and route it into NASA's terrestrial networks. From White Sands, the signal passes to control centers, like the Marshall Space Flight Center in Huntsville, Alabama, and then to the Johnson Space Center in Houston. At Johnson, the video processing facility handles the stream, decoding, switching, and re-encoding as needed, before sending it out to public platforms like YouTube or NASA TV. Along the way, the original high-definition stream is often compressed again to fit the requirements of web distribution. This entire relay, from camera lens to public live stream, depends on a clear line of sight between the ISS, the TDRS satellites, and the ground stations. Because the station orbits Earth every 90 minutes, it is constantly moving in and out of range. The KU band antenna has to hand off between different TDRS satellites as the ISS races around the planet. Each handoff is a chance for the signal to drop, even if only for a few seconds. The result is a video feed that appears seamless when everything works, but is always at the mercy of orbital mechanics and relay geometry. No single person sits at a switch choosing when the public sees the feed. The system is designed to be automatic. Cameras cycle, encoders run, antennas track, satellites relay, and ground stations receive. But every step is a potential failure point. The signal path is long, complex, and stitched together by hardware and software built for reliability, not for drama. When the feed cuts to blue, it is usually the result of a lost link somewhere along this chain. See, the architecture is built for near-continuous coverage, but not perfection. Gaps are baked in. The blazing speed of the ISS, the fixed positions of the relay satellites, and the handoffs between them all shape what viewers on Earth get to see, and sometimes what they do not. ISS video isn't a perfect, unbroken window to space. Even with a relay system designed for near-constant coverage, interruptions are built into the architecture. As the station races around Earth at 17,500 miles per hour, its Ku band antenna must hand off from one tracking and data relay satellite to another. These satellites, parked 22,000 miles above the equator, each cover a slice of the globe. But their coverage is not seamless. Where the edges meet, or when the ISS slips into a spot where no satellite has a clear line of sight, the signal drops. 
Engineers and spaceflight analysts sometimes refer to these areas as coverage gaps, and one region over the Indian Ocean has a reputation for being especially tricky. There, the geometry just does not favor a strong connection. When the ISS enters one of these blind spots or during a satellite handoff, the public feed does not freeze or stutter. It flips instantly to a blue no signal screen. This is not a glitch or an operator's quick finger, it is the system's default response. The handover process is automatic. No one is sitting at a control board waiting to cut the feed. When the station's antenna loses the coup band lock, the chain breaks and the blue slate appears. It is an expected event, not an emergency. These dropouts do not follow a strict schedule, but they do happen regularly. NASA's own public statements describe losses that can last anywhere from a few seconds to a couple of minutes, repeating several times each orbit. The ISS circles the planet every 90 minutes, so these interruptions can occur every 30 to 45 minutes, depending on the path and which relay satellites are in range. Sometimes the signal loss lines up with a satellite handoff. Other times, it is just a matter of orbital geometry. The station's antenna cannot reach any relay at that moment, so the video vanishes. The blue screen is the system's way of saying nothing is coming through. It is not a sign of malfunction or outside interference. It is the predictable result of a complex relay network that was never designed for flawless wall-to-wall -wall coverage. The so-called zone of exclusion over the Indian Ocean is not an official NASA term, but it captures the reality. There are places where the signal just does not reach. Every time the ISS crosses those regions, the live feed drops out, no matter what is on camera at the time. The upshot. Blue screens are a normal part of ISS operations. They are tied to the physics of satellite coverage and the mechanics of orbital motion not to what the cameras happen to catch. Any pattern of interruptions starts here with the relay network's built-in vulnerabilities. If a feed cuts out just as something strange appears, the system itself provides a plausible explanation, at least on paper. A bright speck slips into the corner of the International Space Station live feed. July 9, 2016. The object hovers just above the curve of the Earth, then appears to slow. Seconds later, the screen flips to blue. The clip, uploaded by a user known as StreetCap1, racks up nearly 1.5 million views. He does not claim aliens. He suggests it could be a meteor, but points out the timing. The feed cuts off right as the object seems to pause. This is not the only time the sequence plays out. April 2016. A faint blue horseshoe shape drifts along the horizon in another live stream from the station. The object is barely brighter than the clouds below, easy to miss unless you are watching closely. As it lingers, the feed blinks out mid-observation. The only surviving footage comes from a UFO channel's screen recording. No timestamp, no official NASA archive, just a fragment of video and a lot of speculation. 2017 brings a new kind of anomaly. This time the object is larger, elongated. Some call it a cylinder, others a mammoth craft. It moves slowly across the field of view, tracked for several minutes. The story online claims nine minutes on camera before the feed drops. No mainstream outlet confirms the timing. The original video is gone, only edited clips and re-uploads remain. The exact duration the real sequence, lost to the gap between public interest and public record. In 2020, another oddity. A metallic, pine cone shaped object floats near the station. The camera appears to adjust its framing, maybe zooming in, maybe running an automatic cycle. The object holds steady, then the screen goes blue. Once again, the only evidence is a user capture. No NASA statement, no technical breakdown, just a viral moment and a familiar blackout. These are not isolated cases. Over the past decade, dozens of similar clips have surfaced, each showing a strange object, each followed by a blue screen. The details change, shape, brightness, how long the feed lasts. What stays the same is the pattern. Object appears, feed cuts. 
NASA issues the same explanation, routine signal loss, reflections, nothing unusual. But with every incident, more people start to wonder if the cuts are as automatic as claimed, or if the system is designed to keep the public guessing. The question is not just what is on camera, it is why these moments are so hard to verify, and why the original footage so often disappears into the noise. NASA's official position on these International Space Station feed interruptions is as consistent as it is unflinching. When asked about the viral July 2016 incident, spokesperson Daniel Hewitt explained the cameras were part of the HDEV experiment. It was a set of four commercial-grade HD cameras, not custom space observatories, bolted to the outside of the station. Panasonic, Sony, Hitachi, the kind you might find in a television studio, not a deep space lab. Their job was to test how off the shelf gear would hold up in the harsh environment of low Earth orbit, not to serve as a scientific instrument for tracking anomalies. Hewitt cut through the speculation. He said the station regularly passes out of range of the tracking and data relay satellites used to send and receive video, voice and telemetry from the station. When the ISS loses its high bandwidth Ku band link, the video stream does not freeze or glitch, it flips to a blue screen. No one is standing at a console scanning for suspicious shapes and yanking the plug. The system is built to be automatic. Cameras cycle, antennas track, encoders and ground computers handle the rest. If the signal drops, the blue slate appears. That is the design, not a reaction. On the subject of strange objects in the feed, NASA's language is measured. Reflections from station windows, the spacecraft structure itself, or lights from Earth commonly appear as artifacts in photos and videos from the orbiting laboratory, just as reflections often appear in pictures taken on Earth. Meteors, space debris, ice crystals, city lights, all are routine visitors to the ISS field of view. NASA maintains that no unidentifiable objects have ever been observed from the station. The agency does not address each viral video individually. Instead, it issues the same boilerplate. Routine signal loss, visual artifacts, nothing unusual. The HDEV experiment ran for five years, cycling through its four cameras, sometimes showing the Earth in daylight, sometimes darkness, sometimes only internal calibration. The cameras were not intended to capture high-resolution evidence of unexplained phenomena. They were chosen for durability, not forensic clarity. And while the public feed drew hundreds of millions of views, NASA's own documentation makes clear the continuous live stream was not systematically archived. If viewers wanted to keep a record, they were told to use their own screen capture tools. The agency's focus was on real-time engagement, not building a searchable permanent record. See, the official story is tidy. Feed cuts, orbital mechanics and satellite coverage gaps. Unusual lights, reflections, debris, or the quirks of commercial camera sensors in space. And if you want to check the timing for yourself, you will find there is no comprehensive public archive of the raw, uninterrupted feed. The system is automatic, the explanations are routine, and the burden of proof falls on data that, by policy, was never systematically preserved for outsiders to audit. Hundreds of millions tuned in to watch Earth from orbit, but the record of what they actually saw is surprisingly thin. Over five years, the HDE Vive experiment streamed live video to the public, drawing more than 318 million views. Yet NASA's own webpage spells it out. The HDEV feed was not usually recorded or publicly archived. Anyone hoping to go back and check the original footage, frame by frame, minute by minute, is out of luck. The official recommendation was to use your own screen recording software if you wanted a copy. For a program that sold itself as a public window to space, the absence of a comprehensive archive is more than an oversight. It is a procedural blind spot. The missing footage is not the only gap. NASA has never released a dataset showing exactly when and why each feed outage occurred. There is no public log that matches blue screens to satellite handoffs or to moments when viewers reported anomalies. 
Critics argue that without those records, it is impossible to test whether the infamous pattern in which an object appears and the feed cuts is real or just coincidence. There is no way to run the numbers, no way to check the timing, no way to know if the official explanations hold up under scrutiny. The scale of public interest, the hundreds of millions of views, stands in stark contrast to the thinness of the documented record. What is missing is not just footage. It is the ability to verify, to audit, to settle the debate with data. In a system built for transparency, the most basic evidence is still out of reach. Some explanations for the ISS feed gaps are as old as the controversy itself. One theory claims there is a manual kill switch, someone in mission control with the authority to pull the plug if something unexpected enters the frame. NASA's official line is the system is automated, with no one at a control board making real-time decisions. But in principle, flight controllers and public affairs officers can change what reaches the public. The question is whether that power is ever used for more than routine operations. Another possibility is the objects are not extraterrestrial at all. Some suggest classified military hardware, secret satellites or experimental vehicles occasionally drift into view. If that is true, the feed might be cut to protect national security, not to hide aliens. NASA does not address this scenario directly, and the lack of a comprehensive public archive means there is no way to check if feed cuts line up with known classified flybys. Then there is the idea of designed deniability. The system's built-in gaps, low-resolution cameras, and missing archives create a situation where every explanation is plausible, but none are provable. If something truly unexplained did show up, the combination of automatic blue screens and absent footage would make it easy to shrug it off as another glitch. Perhaps that is just how public-facing space video works, a window to Earth that is always a little fogged. The stakes are about to change. The ISS is scheduled for retirement by 2030. What comes next, commercial stations or new networks, will set the rules for public access and transparency going forward. Will the next generation of space platforms offer real accountability, or will the same convenient uncertainties persist? For now, the feed cuts raise more questions than answers, and the clock is ticking on the world's most watched window into orbit. Today, the International Space Station still orbits above us, its cameras rolling, its blind spots intact. NASA keeps the public feed open, but the doors to real verification stay closed. As long as critical data stays out of reach, trust is a casualty, not a constant. In the search for truth, the real blackout isn't technical, it's institutional. What we are allowed to see still depends on who holds the switch. Share your thoughts below.